Recently, we had a look at the brand new Montec Hyperflow 360 ARGB, a bomb of an AIO. But what if that is too big for you? Some people might want to keep things small. That's why there is a Hyperflow in 240. Before we begin, if you have seen the 360mm video already, feel free to skip to this timestamp. It's the same AIO with one fan less. Everything I'm about to say, like for the next five minutes, is an exact copy of the other video. Except for the size, of course, and then the benchmark section is completely different. But if you want to hear me repeat myself, thanks for the added watch time, and if not, just skip to the benchmark section. There are two color versions of this, black and white, and for this video we'll solely focus on the 240mm version. Montec's first AIO comes in a pretty standard packaging, featuring some images, the usual half-baked PR sentence, and some specs. Inside we'll find the AIO itself, pre-assembled to a degree that makes me happy, and a bag of mounting hardware. In case you are looking for your manual, it is in there, but for all of my Montag AIOs, it somehow landed underneath this piece of carton that keeps everything in place. So if you are looking for yours, there it is. In the before mentioned bag of hardware, you will find all the necessary installation hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets. And as I just said, the AIO comes pre-assembled. So to get it going, all you need to do is mount it down. For Intel on LGA 1700, we need to position the appropriate backplate behind the motherboard and screw it down using the double-sided LGA 1700 screws. And yes, I am aware that for some reason everybody and everybody's dog is now using this mounting mechanic. I don't know why every AIO that I got in the last, I don't know, 3-4 months uses just this. It, it just seems like everybody has the same supplier. Anyway, Montec switched things up here. Instead of having an impossible to screw out round screw, this thing has edges, and including in the bag of goodies, we'll get this thing. And we can use it to mount and unmount the screw, or this double-sided screw, whatever you want to call it, but this is a great job from Montec. And from here, we don't even need to use thermal paste, cause it's already pre-applied, so press the sucker onto the chip and screw it down using the thumb screws. Over on AMD, it's slightly different. First, we need to remove the retention bracket from the water block pump combo, cause that's the Intel one by default, so slide it out and then slide the AMD one on there with the hooks pointing upwards, and from there we can use the old school AMD hooks by pre-attaching them onto the pump and attach the whole thing to the original AMD at retention brackets. Before we continue, I wanted to mention a few things things regarding installation. I don't really care that everybody uses the same mounting mechanic, as long as it works I'm fine with it, but what I do care about is that little twist that Montec has. Believe me, the fact that you can effortlessly remove it afterwards and install it, it, it it's that's gold. But Montec's packaging could be better. I like that there is pre-applied thermal paste and I love the fact that they include even more in the bag of goodies, including like an application sheet and a spatula and all, that's great. But this cover that protects the base and the thermal paste by by, by extension, that thing is on there like very loosely. So what happens quite often uh, is once you try to remove that plastic wrap that is around and if you just pull on it like an idiot, you will pull off the protective piece and then you will smear your uh, thermal paste all over the place, which is just annoying. So for you out there, be gentle with the bag and for Montec, just make it tighter for the next batch. But let's finally talk a bit about the AIO. We got a 27mm thick 20 FPI radiator, so the standard thickness, but slightly on the denser side, with a bit of Montec branding on top. Going out of the red, we got 400mm long relatively high quality feeling tubes which are reinforced on both ends and adjustable at the water block end. Overall, the tubes feel fine and they do look great, but if you ask me, 450 should be minimum. Even with two fans. On the 360 it's more of a problem because there the radiator is bigger, but on, even on 240 I would have preferred 450mm long tubes. And now let's go over the fans. These are Montex yet unreleased Metal 12 Pro ARGB and I'm saying unreleased because I can, I, I bet my as they will be out as a product in a week or so. Anyway, these are supposed to be the pro version of their previously released metal fans. And I sincerely hope that they are pro because the last ones were kinda bad. These are spinning at up to 2100 rpm and push out up to 76.2 CFM at up to 3.81 mm of H2O, so spec wise they are perfectly equipped to be used on radiators. In the center we got a gigantic metal Montec badge and the corners are rubberized as hell to remove any excess vibrations. The fan blade design is interesting to say the least. We got nine wings and all of them have these airflow channels, whatever you want to call it, on them 
and they do look kind of cool. Once they are spinning, especially when they are spinning slow, you can see that those grooves are still visible. I don't know, I, I think it looks kind of cool. But the most important point about them, they are 28 millimeters thick, which is more like 27 and a half, but yeah, if you ignore the rubber, they are not 28. Anyway, this also explains why the whole thing, or why the blades seemed so big to me in the beginning. Build-wise, they feel perfectly fine. The central hub may or may not be too gigantic, that can have its reason, and the only thing that I found that might be bad for like their general usage is the fact that they do not fully cover the radiator. So you got a potential space for some spillback and that could have been avoided. Other than that, we got ARGB. From the center of the fan, we got some illumination going. It's strong or strong enough to make it all the way through. So if this is your type of design, good for you. To connect the fan, Montek decided to go the proprietary route. All of the fans got that whatever the hell this is seven pin connector, but as everything comes pre-assembled like from default, uh, the adapter to go back to three pin ARGB and four pin PWM is already there, so that's fine to me. Coming to the heart of the AIO, this big ass ARGB plate. Unsurprisingly, this whole thing just lights up. Whether you like that or not, that will be up to you, but get ready to get as much ARGB as Montek was able to cram into here, including two edges. Below all of that rainbow power, we got a PWM controlled 3100 RPM pump and a 55.7 by 55.7 copper base. And with all of that said, let's get to the benchmark section. We test all of our coolers on top of a 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. For AO specifically, we force the pump to spin at 100% all the time. And as we benchmark each preset, we slowly reduce the fan speed while it's taking note of the noise to later create a noise to performance graph. At 120 watts, aka your average gaming session, the Hyperflow 240 managed to keep the 3900K at 30.2 degrees C above ambient. Now, first off, it is out of the group of insanely well-performing coolers. That, that's true, but the Hyperflow isn't standing on a bad spot. It is still outperforming the Kuga AIO at 120 watts at least, and compared to a bottom shelf performing 240mm AIO, it is standing pretty strong. Compared to the 360mm version, we are looking at a 1.6 degree C loss because of that missing third fan and radiator. All things considered, it stands in a good spot, pretty much where I would expect a good 240mm AIO to stand. For the Noise 2 performance chart for 240mm AIOs, I had some trouble to find good comparisons because we just didn't benchmark that many 240mm AIOs until now. But if we compare the 240mm Hyperflow to that Anamax AIO that I just mentioned, it is a big difference. And the same is true for some 360s actually. Compared to the Geometry Future 360mm AIO, the Hyperflow 240 just flat out wins. Size is definitely not everything. If the cold plate sucks, everything sucks. On the other hand, if you got an insanely well optimized AIO, like the Iceberg Thermal one, there is more performance to squeeze out of the 240mm form factor. And compared to the 360mm version, here you can see what that third fan actually provides you with. But overall, at 120 watts, the Hyperflow 240 stands strong. Not a sharp top up, definitely not, but it can deliver. Pushing the heat up to 250 watts made the CPU temperature rise to 57.8 degrees C above ambient. This leaves the Hyperflow in exactly the same spot actually, if you look at the whole chart, but compared to the Anamax AIO, the difference has become much, much bigger. And compared to the 360mm model, the difference has now more than doubled to 3.4 degrees. Overall, it is still standing strong. Funnily enough, still outperforming a bunch of 360s, but that's more their story than the Hyperflows. And on the noise to performance graph, the difference to the 360 version has become much bigger. But compared to the slightly bigger FX280 from Be Quiet, those have actually come closer together. Interesting to see here, the Anamax AIO can barely keep on. And for that one, we couldn't even know the fans be down to noise lore anymore. So there is definitely a big difference between good performing 240s and the average 240. And now let's pump it up to 360 and allow the CPU to go up to 110 degrees. At this point, the 240 version kept the chip at 79.6 degrees above ambient, which is actually insanely good. With 320 watts going through that cold plate, only the best can keep on going, and the Anamax, for example, it was just gone at this point. Compared to the bigger version, the difference has now become almost five degrees, but overall, it is still impressive that the 240 made by Montag can do anything at this point. On the noise to 
performance graph for 360 watts, the Hyperflow still managed to create a graph. It might not be quite enough to reach noise floor anymore, but we can see that compared to bigger or insanely well-optimized AIOs, the Hyperflow is close behind. It is still an awesome AIO in my opinion. Compared to the 360 version, we lose between 2 and 5 degrees of like, potential performance, which is fine, smaller red, one fan less, everything makes sense. And if you look at the performance overall, it is exactly where I would expect a good performing 240mm AIO to be. The one thing that bothers me slightly is that Iceberg Thermal AIO, the 240 one, it is so insanely good or so insanely optimized, at least the cold plate I believe, makes everything else look bad. But if you blur that one out and you look at, for example, the Anamax one, Montex attempt is very, very good. And with a 85 USD price tag, I come to the same conclusion as on the 360. The performance is top, quality is great, design is up to you, of course, and we can definitely recommend it. Now, if saving 10 bucks is worth the performance loss is a completely different question. For me, no. I would gladly spend 10 bucks more to jump from here to here. But if you only got space for a 240, the Hyperflow ARGB 240 will definitely do. For example, a 13700K, 7900X, all of these will be fine. But I have something a bit negative to add. The plate that is on, um, on the center of the fan, the glue of it isn't really the strongest. I can pull it off. I, I won't because I still need to do b-rolls of it, but on some fans it tries to come off, especially when you rip off the protective uh, film that is on there. But okay, this should be everything on the new Montec Hyperflow ARGB in 240. And at this point, a huge thank you to Montec for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji that's one way to go but if not i'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance except for the nda stuff because you know i, I don't want to get sued additionally can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat but it will also serve to create even more caps for that pump water block combo because why not? Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the insane liquid freezer 3 420. If you got the size, why not? I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.